Hello class, welcome to lesson 4-2, which is all about simplifying algebraic expressions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify parts of an algebraic expression and use the distrib distributive property to simplify algebraic expressions. So, let's talk about some vocab. So a term is a part of an algebraic expression. So a term could be something as simple as a number, so like 3. Or a term could be x, or a term could be 3x put together. Um, but notice there's no adding or subtracting involved um, for a term. A coefficient is the numerical part of a variable term. So that 3x, the coefficient, is just the 3. A constant is a term without a variable. So just the number 3 on its own would be a constant. 3x would not be a constant. Terms that contain the same variables. So if I had 3x and I had 5x, those would be like terms because they're both a number with the variable x. If I had a 2x squared, even though it's an x, that's not a like term because of this exponent. Okay, so they need to have the same exponent in order to be a like term. And then simplest form is an algebraic expression with no like terms and no parentheses. People often forget the part about no parentheses. So if I were to have 3x plus 5x plus uh, 2x squared, that's not simplest form because both the 3 and the 5 have a regular x. So since it's addition between them, I could combine them to make 8x plus 2x squared. Again, I can't combine 8x and 2x squared because the x doesn't have the same exponent. Okay, so this would be the simplest form for that problem. So let's identify the parts. So if we break this down, this is a term, 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 and another term, right? And then, so I'm just going to write out all of the different terms we have. So we have a negative with that 6, so I'm going to bring that down. Then I'm just going to change colors quick. And let's talk about what are the coefficients. So remember, the coefficients are the numbers with a variable. So 3 is a coefficient, but you never write the variable. So 3, 5, and negative 6 are all coefficients. And then let's talk about like terms. So our like terms would be anything with an m in this case. So 3m, 5m, and negative 6m. And another term that we talked about on the last page was constants. And we have one constant, right? That would be the number 2. Remember, constants are the ones without variables. So those would be all of the different parts for this problem. So term, coefficients, constant, and like terms. I mixed up the order just a little bit, but if the book asks you to identify the parts, this is what you have to do. Um, you can list them however you want. You can list them like I did here where I just made four columns. Some people like to make a box and write them, you know, in the box like the terms, coefficients, constants, like terms. Just make sure you have the labels in each box. Alright, so if we identify the parts again. So let's start with terms. And then we have like terms. And we still need coefficients. And we need the constants. All right, so the terms, remember you just write down each item that is listed, 
Make sure you bring down the symbol that's in front of them. If it's a negative, you don't have to write the positives. We just assume that that's there if there's no negative. Our like terms would be 6x and just x. There's nothing that's similar with the y, and there's no other just regular number. My coefficients are 6, negative 2. And then don't forget that in front of this x, there's an invisible 1. A lot of people forget to write down that as a coefficient, but it is there. Okay, and then constants. So the numbers without any variables. In this case, just negative 5. So that's how I would identify the parts for this problem. Now let's practice simplifying. So I have 3m plus 5m minus 6m plus 2. So I need to look and see what ones have the same variable. So I see an m here here and here. None of them are squared or cubed. They're all just a regular m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the numbers in front of them. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 6 is 2m. And then don't forget to bring down that constant. So that would be my simplest form. Now up here, I have an x and an x, so I can say 6 plus, don't forget the invisible one, 6 plus 1 is 7x. A lot of people would see that and just write 6x and get it wrong, so don't forget that invisible one. And then I have nothing I can combine that 2y with, and I have nothing I can combine that regular minus 5 with, so I just write it as an expression. And that is my simplest form. And it's okay to have three terms. Sometimes you'll have even more than three. All right, now we're going to combine what we learned yesterday with uh, simplifying. So here we have 6y minus 3 parentheses x minus 2y. So again, I'm going to distribute that negative 3 as I go. So I'm going to carry down my 6y, and then negative 3 times x is minus 3x. Negative 3 times a negative 2y is positive 6y. Now I look at this and I say, do I have any terms that can be combined? I see a y here and I see a y here. Since they're regular y's, they're not y squared or anything, they're exactly the same. I can say 6 plus 6, which is 12y, and then minus 3x. And that is going to be my simplest form, because I cannot combine x's and y's together. All right, simplify. This is, again, like what we did yesterday combined with what we did today. A little different, though, because I have three terms inside the parentheses. It works the same way. I'm going to distribute that 4 to everything inside of my parentheses. So 4 times q is going to give me 4q, plus 4 times 8p would be 32p, and then 4 times a negative 2 would be minus 8 plus p. Now I need to look for like terms that I can combine. So I only have one term with a q, so I'm going to just carry that down. Nothing's going to change there. But I see I have a p and a p. So 32p here plus 1p would give me 33p. Again, don't forget that 1. The number of times people forget that 1 is astounding. Then we have a minus 8. Sometimes once you've combined terms, it's easy to forget to carry that number down. So don't forget to do that. Make sure that you've taken care of every term that was listed. So my final answer is 4q plus 33p minus 8. All right, now we're going to practice a word problem. Write an expression. So Dirk scored x points in his first basketball game of the season. He scored three times as many points in the second game. In the third game of the season, he scored six more points than in the second game. Write an expression in the simplest form for his total 
points from the first three games. So game one, he scored X points. Game two, he scored three times as many points as in the first game. And then the third game, he scored six more points than in the second game. So the second game plus six. Now I have to write an expression in the simplest form for his total points. So total means I have to add up all three games together in order to find his total. Now I need to combine like terms because I have a lot of x terms listed here. So I have an x, I have a 3x, and a 3x. So remember this is a 1, so 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 3 is, I have a total of 7x's plus 6. And that is my expression in simplest form because I can't combine a term with an x with a term that doesn't have an x. So that is my final answer. If you have any questions about this lesson, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you and have a great day.